Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. Yes, Tom Wagner. We have a new face beside me, though not new to county government. Tom's been our Vice Chairman for a number of years now, and just last night, although depending on when they see this, but at our last county board meeting, Tom was unanimously selected our new county board chair. So welcome, Tom. Thank you, Adam. We will continue to co-host co this program together. And, and as you know, every year we strive to, or every program rather, we strive to bring a different department head to our meetings and talk a little bit about their roles and responsibilities. And today, Aaron Brault, our planning and conservation director is here. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you. He was just sharing off the air. It's been nine years that he's been with the county and five and a half as director and has done just an excellent job. And I imagine you have about as many feathers in your cap as just about any director in the state with the major programs that you've been involved in. And we'll touch on that in a moment. But please start, share a little bit about your background here. Sure. Um, before coming to Sheboygan County, my wife and I both moved here about nine years ago. Been with the county now for nine years. I worked in the uh, private urban planning sector for a number of years, got my feet wet there, and then um, moved away from Wisconsin for a bit, owned my own business, had nothing to do with planning at that time. And then uh, when we moved back here, there was an opportunity at the county and jumped at it and, and took it. So Started nine years ago as the head of our non-motorized transportation program? I was an assistant at that assistant time. Assistant at and the time. The, uh, the, the manager of that left and then I jumped at that opportunity and then soon after that the planning director left and and then went after that position so yeah yeah well you've had a good run and how quickly time goes set the stage for us a little bit what are the roles and responsibilities of the planning and conservation department sure it's a we have a variety of different uh, roles that we play within the community um, I like to think that no day is the same for me which is one of the nice things about my position um, I think we have 10 different ordinances in the county that we enforce and regulate. Uh, I think we have 16 or 17 different programs uh, throughout the county that we are involved in. Uh, we take care of the, a lot of the county's recreational facilities, so like the Old Plank Road Trail, the Inner Urban Trail. We have partial maintenance responsibilities on the Shoreland 400 Trail that runs through the city of Sheboygan, uh, the Sheboygan Marsh, the new Amsterdam Dunes property all falls under our jurisdiction. Uh, the Ag community, our guys in the conservation division work with the Ag community quite a bit. Um, you know, doing everything from designing manure pits to installing grass buffer waterways, primarily water quality driven types of activities on, on that side of the, the office. And then we get into zoning around our shoreland districts and, and sanitary maintenance program, take care of all the county's mapping. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. And with yeah. all that going on, uh, what about your staff size and your annual budget? Annual budgets usually between two and two and a half million. Um, the last couple of years, I think it's been about 2.1, 2.2. Uh, I have 14 staff. Um, out of that 2.1, 2.2, it's about um, just shy of a million in, in tax levy. So the most of our, uh, or I shouldn't say the most, but the majority of the dollars that fund our department are outside funds, not coming from the, the county's tax levy. So. And planning and conservation used to be just a planning department and a land and water conservation department. So we consolidated two departments into one. Yep. Obviously saved some uh, money having one now department head. And then I also know you've done some analysis in the past comparing and contrasting our planning and conservation department to other counties. And we tend to be a little bit more on the lean side. Is that right? I, I would agree with that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of other counties might have their own parks department or own land and water department or own real property department. And, and so our department's sort of a combination of all those. Yeah, a lot of good people making good things happen. Yep, absolutely. I mean, you surround yourself with good people and, and good things happen, so. What's happened with your budget big picture over the years? Have you seen it go up? Have you seen it gone down? I, I know you've had good success personally uh, getting state and federal grants. Yep. So uh, overall, it's it's I'd say stag stagnated. I mean, it's at least in my tenure, it's been around that two, two and a half. 
uh, for, I, I would say, our normal operating duties. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, there has been a couple of years where it's spiked up or down based on, uh, you know, a different activity that may have been happening, uh, such as a few years ago we had the river dredging project, and I think that year it was a $7.8 million a year you know, in our department, but a lot of that again was grant we, funds that grant came funds that came in, and, in and we yeah. went back out. Right. So. Right. Yeah. No, I think you've done a great job holding the line, and it really it's a reflection of all the departments in the in the county and the county board's fiscal responsibility to hold the line. Yet again, your department's been highly su successful in acquiring some grants and doing some good work. So, some of the primary programs that you focused on, some good things that have happened in Sheboygan County. Uh, touch on one or two. Um, well, as you mentioned, I started off in that non-motorized grant. Uh, we currently have a big project going on right now. If you've driven down Taylor Drive, you've seen a lot of barrels. They're not all ours, so on the southern end, some of that, that's a state project on the, uh, the interchange at, at 28. Um, but we have that project going on this summer. Things got going about a couple, uh, probably three or four weeks ago. They started moving dirt. Um, and then uh, a couple other things, um, uh, recently we've been completing a watershed study out in the, the western part of the county. Uh, we had a test watershed and a control watershed, uh, the test being the Otter Creek watershed of the Sheboygan River. And the, uh, the con or the, that was the test watershed and the control watershed was Fisher's Creek up in Howard's Grove. And that was privately funded by the Kohler Trust for Preservation along with some county dollars and uh, Nature Conservancy dollars, but primarily uh, a grant um, that we partnered on with the Nature Conservancy, um, USGS, and a couple of other partners where we're looking at best management practices in the ag community and how that could reduce uh, phosphorus loading to a stream or a, or a water body. That's becoming more and more prevalent um, both at the federal and state level is trying to reduce the phosphorus that's entering our waterways to right. combat you know, fish kills and, and algae blooms primarily, which then lead to more fish kills and things like that. So. Any early indications on what kind of what we're learning from that stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things that I guess from my standpoint, um, one, uh, you know, we're getting a good idea of what it's going to cost to treat a pound of phosphorus based on different best management practice, and, and there's a lot of variables in that, but we, we have sort of an average cost that we've been able to glean after the six years of study. Um, uh, another interesting fact, at least, at least from my standpoint, is that it, the, the, the water and, and the, the, the creeks don't react like this. You know, it, it takes time for them to heal and, and the quality to get better. And then two, um, or three, the, the biggest thing that I think I've gleaned out of it is that the, the highest loading comes in probably, we've seen between three and six events, rain events or big melts or something in the hmm. year. Hmm. It's not, you know, it's very pronounced where we're getting, some years we have gauges in the river that record all this, so we know when it spikes or when it's down or dips. So it, it tends to be, you know, again, five events throughout the year. I think last year, 70% of the loading going into that system was in four events. Because of a four main rainfalls or something like a that. A big rainfall yeah, or a yeah. big melt in spring where everything's running off the field and there's yeah. no vegetation to capture it. The importance of having buffer Buffers, strips yep. and people doing good management of manure spreading, yep. all of that has to be a huge factor. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Well, nice quick overview. I'm going to turn it over to Chairman Wagner. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for coming. Not a problem. First time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Sheboygan County's been a leader in uh, holding down our taxes in particular. Um, and just wondering, uh, as far as the planning department, how do you keep your costs in check? It's kind of a, it's a challenging environment, I'm sure. Yep, absolutely. So as Adam mentioned, over the past few years, we've been successful in, in getting, whether it be private or public funding, to help offset some of our, our costs. Um, and then, you know, we've really taken it from the, the big scale to the small scale projects as well. Uh, when we merged, we had, I think, four printers and we were paying for four different printers. Now we have two. 
Um, so that's, you know, that's a monthly cost. Not a great cost, but it, it adds up just like everything else. At our trailheads and boat landings, whenever a light goes out or somebody shoots them out with a BB gun, rather than replacing them with the high pressure sodium or whatever, we're moving towards LED. The upfront cost is a lot higher. But we figured, you know, you probably, it probably pays back in electricity bills because those are on all the time, you know, probably within 14 to 15 months. So, and an LED is going to last for 20 years unless, again, somebody shoots it out with a BB gun. So, um, you know, we've been making small improvements, you know, in addition to seeking out other outside types of funding to help us operate. So, good. I know the, uh status of the recreation fee. I think we had more people at the county board meeting than I remember ever remember seeing then or since uh, when that was implemented. So there was some controversy surrounding it. Yep. How has that worked out relative to uh, our campgrounds, et cetera? Sure. And I guess that's a, you know, another way we've been able to keep taxes in check is, you know, um, we haven't had to raise taxes to operate those facilities because um, we've been uh, go, we we have the fee now, and that and that helps offset our costs. Um, so we we pay. We've been able to upgrade some of the boat landings, the piers at Elkhart Lake. Um, I believe this week, in fact, Little Elkhart Lake's pier is going to be updated. Uh, on the marsh, we did some things. Um, so it, I think you know the, the the sentiments that were there a couple of years ago or five years ago now. Um, you know, are starting to wane a little bit that, you know, we're not going to pay for squad cars or something with those dollars. The dollars are in a non-lapsing segregated account that are specifically there for uh, projects at the different boat landings and things like that. Yeah, I haven't heard too much about it. I, mean, I, I would think once people start to see that there's improvements going into the boat landings or the campgrounds or whatever, that really helps with those fees. I, I think so too. And, yeah. and I think people have, I mean, it, well, no, we'll leave fine. it at that. That's fine. Uh, speaking of the rec facilities, what do you have some plans out at the marsh for this year? Yep, yep. Two, I'll, I'll say, fun projects. And this is where some of those dollars, we also, at that time, we're doing the, the rec fee. Um, at the campground, every rental that our vendor out there takes, um, the county gets $2.50. And that those dollars go into a non-lapsing account again, a segregated account that can only be used for campground activities. Um, one of the big complaints we get out there all the time from campers um, and when we've gone through planning exercises is that, you know, there's n not a whole lot to do after you get bored fishing or climb the tower so many times. So uh, we were looking at different kind of low cost activities that would work at the marsh. And what we came up with is we're going to be installing the county's first foot golf course and a, a disc golf course. Disc golfing is the fastest growing sport in the United States. Um, so we're gonna, I guess, ride on those coattails, install a disc golf course and a foot golf course. And for those in the audience who don't know what foot golf is, I didn't either, um, but with all the kids playing soccer now, mm -hmm. it's essentially kicking a soccer ball into a golf hole, so. Right, some golf courses have actually put it on some of their nine holes. I yeah, know. absolutely. I think down in Milwaukee at some of the city courses, they can get out of a nine hole regular golf course, they can get about 18 foot golf holes. And I think they're diversifying their clientele and, right. you know, bottom line. So. Well, thank you. Um, a few years ago, your department was awarded a Brownfield Assessment Grant. Yep. Uh, could you tell us about the redevelopment projects? Yeah, so we, we've, it was a, a countywide assessment grant. So we've um, done what's called phase one and phase two environmental testing and research on different redevelopment opportunities throughout the county. We've had a couple in the city of Sheboygan, so the old Boston store site, we're actively working on that one. The other apartment complex across from the old Martin Pontiac, we did the environmental work on there. Uh, we just engaged with a, a developer uh, or potential developer in the city of Sheboygan Falls at a, a site. Um, and, and a brownfield is an old industrial site or maybe an old filling station where there might be some residual pollution left in the ground or, or what have you um, that needs to get taken care of before that site can be redeveloped. So um, we've been able to, I like to think, at least act as the catalyst to get some of those projects moving um, by paying for those uh, uh, phase one and phase two environmental uh, reports. So. Um, recently, your department sponsored a hazardous or a household hazardous waste. In fact, I think last year I was out at the one at Cascade that you were yep. putting on. So I had to drop something off. 
Please tell us how the, long this program has been in place and the results of it. Yeah, I think since 2001, so it was many predecessors ago for me that started it, but um, it's been a very popular program. Um, we started to help offset some of our costs charge a few years ago, and the year before we started to charge, we had a survey and we asked everybody that came through the line, so about 1,100, we usually see 11 to 1,300 people come through our uh, events, and 97% of them said absolutely yes, we'd be willing to pay a fee, 2% or maybe, and then you know one was absolutely not. So uh, we saw that, yeah, you know, just the, it's the one program where we consistently get thank yous, you know, and in, I guess in my line of work, you don't get a thank you very often. So, I mean, people, there's nowhere else to go with this stuff and, and they really appreciate it. So um, I think since 01, we've dis properly disposed of over 1.4 million uh, tons of hazardous waste. That's a lot. What was the fee yeah. again? Did you have one fee for? 10 bucks if it's hazardous right. waste. If you bring electronics, it's 25, or if you have both, it's 25. And the cost of electronics per is... Per vehicle or... Per vehicle. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, the cost of electronics or recycling those has gone up because right. it's a direct correlation with the uh, cost of precious metals, gold, copper, things like that. So so if they coordinate with their neighbor, they can fill that trunk or <laughs> back of that vehicle with as many televisions as they want. Well, we like to household <laughs> quantity. So if, <laughs> if you bring a car and a trailer load full of stuff, I might charge you double. Okay. <laughs> okay. I brought so, two things. Yeah. <laughs> Very so, good. Yeah. Uh, earlier, you mentioned the Sheboygan River Harbor cleanup, and you know I think most of our viewers are, are aware of that or have read about it. But I just see it as you know one of those feathers in your cap that I mentioned earlier. Hundred million dollar cleanup, and Aaron and his staff, and certainly the county board, the the city common city, council. Yeah. There were so many people involved with helping make that happen. But we literally pulled down a hundred million dollars to clean up our Sheboygan River harbor and now it's obviously a jewel rather than a super fun site or black guy in the community and then more recently another jewel opportunity uh, presented itself and that was the amsterdam dunes preservation area and wetland mitigation bank and there's been a fair amount of press on that chairman roger distruti certainly takes a lot of pride in that accomplishment the county board unanimously supported it but aaron set the stage a little bit what is the amsterdam preservation area and more importantly what's this wetland mitigation component that's part of it sure uh, so the the, the property is in the southeast part of the county, so it's down near Cedar Grove. Um, it's 328 acres of uh, preservation area and mitigation bank. And what a mitigation bank is, is that anytime there's a disturbance through development, whether it be a, a road project that the county does or let's say an area employer is looking to expand and they have wetlands on the property that are looking at developing or, or, or expanding on, um, state and federal law says that you have to restore one and a half times your disturbance typically, general rule of thumb. And so the county had a couple projects where we had to buy credits on the open market, just like you'd go get a gallon of milk at the supermarket. Um, there's credits available from these pe from people who have created a, a mitigation bank where they've gone and, and taken the tile out of the farmland or, or whatnot and restored it back to what it once was. And then, so we had to buy these credits. The current rates are up to 70,000 an acre. At the time we bought them, they were about 50 to 60,000 an acre. And we were buying them in Douglas County, which is where Superior is. So um, unfortunately, our citizens were subsidizing something up in a different part of the state that they'll probably never get to see or use. So I think that was one of the, the key um, selling points to this is that we'll have our own bank in hand that we control that will be more efficiently distributed to our developers in our county and in our area. Um, so it, we're in the process of getting the, the required approvals uh, for both the mitigation portion of the property and the non-mitigation portion of the property. Um, we're working through those processes right now to uh, be able to establish that. I think when we did uh some expansion out at the airport. That was one of the places where we had to uh, yes. buy, buy some yep. wetland yep. mitigation. Yep. County yeah. Highway J, you know, and a couple other projects. Yeah, so, if our, so if our viewers are thinking about it, anytime the county wants to expand a county road 
or the city or local units of government want to expand a road that may impact a wetland, yep. they have a situation with the credits. Our airport runaway situation with uh, wetland mitigation, purchasing credits. And then if it's a Sargento, a Johnsonville, a Kohler company, whoever it may be, if they want to expand their headquarters, the DNR, or federal government, doesn't just let you plow under or develop a wetland, but if you're a headquarters of a company, it's not prudent or practical to move it to another area, they're probably going to let you. But in that situation, as you said, they have to mediate that use and purchase credits. And by having this here, we are going to save taxpayers money and we're going to be protecting and preserving a beautiful area right here in Sheboygan County rather than Douglas County, as you said. Yep. So it's a win-win. And we have, I mean, at the property, there's beach frontage that we've protected that's been undeveloped or is still undeveloped that, you know, there, that's, there's not any more of that, you know, being put on the market. So, And um, the county board, as you know, took a bit of a leap of faith here when we presented this proposal. And I want to thank Chairman Wagner and at the time Chairman Testrudi for supporting us in doing that. But they took a leap of faith because it was a $4.2 million purchase for the property. Yep. But Aaron, we both shared with the board that we really think we can recoup this investment. Where are we at with that? Well, so far out of the, the 4.2 original outlay, we've received, I think, around 2.44 in reimbursement on that. Uh, we have another 1.3 or so sitting on the table, which leaves us about 460,000 short. Uh, we also have three lots that we can sell, or up to three lots on, on the lakefront um, that are sort of an offshoot of the main part of the property. So, um, you know, with the prices on those, we're working on another deal with a neighbor where we might do a little swap. And uh, I, I feel, and that's not including any of the credits we sell down the road. Right. Um, you know, we'll be, I think, well taken care of. Uh, and the 2.4 was the what, one of the largest um, state stewardship stewardship yep. grants ever provided, and the. 1.7 is through the natural resource damage assessment process. Yep, 1.3. It's 1.3. Yep, yep. Thank you. Natural resource damage so assessment. So when it's all yep. said and done, we're going to not only recoup our 4.2, but as we sell the credits, garner enough revenue to be able to continue to maintain and enhance the property. Yep, maintain and help restore the property. Yep. And on that note, uh, Chairman Testrudi at the time appointed an advisory committee made up some folks from the community, I know you're on it, that are providing advice to now Chairman Wagner and the county board on how to enhance this property. What are the some of, what are the, some of the things they're considering? Sure, well, Chairman Wagman's on that, or Wagner's on that committee as well, so. Um, well, that's right, I, that's right. <laughs> I'm on so, the yes, you yeah. are. Um, so yeah, so we're looking at it, um, you know, from a restoration aspect, what, is the pro what do we want the property to look like from a, a restoration aspect, as well as also, you know, it's our new public facility. So how do we engage people and let them see it? So it, really it's always been about low impact, maybe a low impact trail development around certain portions of the property, an interpretive type of trail system where, uh, you know, there's some great ravines and bluff overlooks there where we might put a little platform or something like that. But for the most part, it's low impact. Let's leave it alone and preserve the era, area and um, cross country ski trails. No, we won't be developing that. We, per some of the requirements of the steward, uh, stewardship grant, we, we can't not allow that. Um, but I don't think we'll actively be developing cross country ski trails. Um, Keep it just a, more a low, state. sort of yep. this wide of hiking trail. Kind of like the Sheboygan County Marsh. Yep. Yep. Very good. Essentially. Only a few minutes left. You've hit on two big areas the, the River Harbor cleanup, obviously, the Amsterdam Dam Dune Preservation Area Wetland Mitigation Bank. But I know another issue you're working on or an opportunity is with the Friends of the Sheboygan County Marsh and an environmental center. Uh, just give us a little snapshot of what's in mind there to further improve our Sheboygan County Marsh. Sure. The Friends of the Marsh, obviously, they, they helped build the tower. That yep. was their uh, first feather in their cap. And now they're engaging on a new multi-purpose building. Camp Wicota has been in a donated trailer that's 
served its purpose early on, but their programming out at the marsh, environmental programming, pretty much every school district in the area sends kids out there for some hands-on learning experience out in the marsh, getting their feet wet and getting to see critters in real life and under microscopes. And, and they've essentially outgrown their donated trailer. And then I guess from an aesthetic standpoint, does you know could we do something a little bit better out at our county park? Um, so they're uh, uh, setting off to build a new multi-purpose building. We got the plans in place. Um, we got uh, estimates. We got one large, very large donation, sort of the set, set the stage, and we'll be starting sort of a silent campaign, um, going to other foundations in the area and things like that soon. And then we'll be going out and actively seeking, you know, um, the remainder of the dollars. So we're, we're well on our way, um, and I would hope that, uh, you know, looking at 2017, we can start putting a shovel in the ground and making that a reality. So we're well, looking at it being a lead platinum building, the first in the area from an environmental standpoint. A net zero building is the goal. It's going to be awesome. If you haven't gotten out to the Sheboygan County Marsh for a while, drive on out there. We've got the still the Marsh Lodge where you can get a beer or a refreshment with your family. It's a, it's a nice family ad, environment. And if you're looking to go camping because you haven't done that in a while, you don't have to drive far. So I encourage yeah. you to check it out. There are so many beautiful areas in Sheboygan County and sometimes I think we need we feel like we have to drive up north to, to enjoy the, yep. the outdoors and we've got the kettles and just Lake Michigan there's just so many beautiful areas here. Yep. Aaron Brault thank you so much for your leadership as our planning and conservation director thank you to your staff who don't hear thank you enough but do a tremendous job for this community. I hope you learned a little bit about our Sheboygan County Planning and Conservation Department today. If not, or you want to learn more, or if you have suggestions for improvement, don't hesitate to contact Aaron directly. In fact, we'd like all phone calls to go to Aaron for every issue. No, no. no I'm just <laughs> contact Aaron Brault because he does nice work and there's a lot going on, particularly this non-motorized transportation program that's starting to wrap up and all the good work that's been done there. So again, thank you, Aaron. Yep, thank you. Next month, rather than the department head sitting across from me, you're going to see newly elected County Board Chairman Tom Wagner, and I'm going to be pleased to ask a few questions of him, put him on the hot seat so you can all learn more about the chief elected official of Sheboygan County. Tom now oversees an organization with a $128 million budget, 19 departments, 200 827 staff operating over 207 programs and services. So he has a lot of responsibility as county board chairman. He is my direct supervisor, and I am looking forward to working with him as I did with Chairman Distruti. So until then, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month.